Welcome to another Euro dollar update. Now, I just want to touch on this. Now, if you would have seen my previous idea, I said that we're looking at a zigzag here because it can't be a five-way move. Now, if it is a five-way move, you know, fair enough, but I highly doubt it. And that's because I know the overall pattern, right? And this, this is where it becomes really critical that you understand RS wave. Because patterns can only, they can only create one pattern, right? There's no alternative pattern. Like if you understand Elliott wave, with Elliott wave, like it could be a, a, B, C, it could be a double, a triple, a flat, a this, or that. It's just ridiculous, right? With RS wave, there's only one thing that can happen, right? So in this particular case, so far, I'm actually quite disappointed in everybody right now because nobody has pointed out one simple thing. How can the C wave be shorter than the A wave? Now, the problem here lies because you just don't know Arius wave. So therefore, you're not going to be any good at giving me advice as to what's going to happen in this market in the future. So in this particular instance, I want to make a really good example of this. So the NFPs happened on Friday night. So we saw this move up, right? We'll get rid of this line now. That was from a previous psych out idea that I had. But the one key thing that you have to understand here is that, okay, so if you thought this was a, even a zigzag or a one, two, a one, two, then why is this move shorter than, than the A wave? That's because this is a zigzag that is basically halfway done it's halfway done Let, let's just delete this line that doesn't mean anything right now just because you can draw a line on a chart that means zero okay if you don't know arius wave then you just don't know what you're doing i'm sorry i have to say it okay now i have seen somewhere someone posted an idea euro is about to go short and you know what they were right and that they posted this around here when it looked like this was like a, uh, you know, like a head and shoulders pattern. Okay. Around here. That looks like a head, that does look like a head, head and shoulders pattern. It's like left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Great. That's fabulous. I can't believe I can rely on these patterns so much. And then, and then they start to see this go down and then boom up. Now, let me just say, number one, head, well, any pattern at all means nothing unless you know the waves. Patterns are only good when you know the waves. They're actually like, a, they're like an afterthought. So therefore, in this particular situation, I want to explain to you in Arius wave terms, what this pattern is, okay? And now, like I said before, I, I thought, I was hoping someone would give me something, but as always, there's nothing. So here we go. That's an A wave, all right? That's a B wave. That's a C wave. Whoa, 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 what? That's a C wave? How's that a C wave? Okay, let's have a look. Now, you've probably heard of ending diagonals and, well, RS wave calls them weak patterns, right? So it's like an ending diagonal, but ending diagonals don't just happen at the end of moves. I don't, I don't know what you've made, been made to believe. 
according to like what stuff like Elliott Wave. Elliott Wave is garbage. All right. So just say, for example, that's wave three, which by the way, it looks the sharpest. It can't be the shortest and it wasn't. So according to Arius Wave, that is a wave C. Now, what is this move down since then? It's a D wave. D wave. What color is that? It's a blue. Now, what's this? This is an E wave. Now, I, I said to you, I gave you the clue in previous videos that news events are usually the end of a move. Now, in this case, it's the end of the B wave, right? It's the end of the B wave. You get me? So what does that mean? It means that that was the A, uh, sorry, that was the A wave. That's the B wave. Done. Okay. So what does that mean? Okay. So that means we're going to see a C wave. So that means this move is going to go like this. <gasps> Look, it's touching the, the midpoint of this trend line channel. Yeah. Whatever you call it, doesn't really matter. Why would it do that? Why? Because it's a, it's in any diagonal in a, you know, it's, it's, it's correcting. God forbid that it should correct, right? Well, that's exactly what it's doing. So really like you can't expect a wave four to be small when wave two was tiny. Look at that. Look at that wave two. That wave two was absolutely tiny. Right. So that's just a wave. Now, Obviously, we're going to have to see the B, the C, the D, the E. It's going to be, as I've said before, it's going to be extended and probably long in duration, right? I don't know if you've ever heard me say this, but the currencies top around, well, the, the euro compared to the Dow usually tops around nine months on average, on average nine months after the Dow Jones. So the Dow Jones could be topping right now. It might even start turning lower soon. And it will take the Euro probably another nine months to hit that upper trend line. Sorry, the upper, ch upper channel, right? Now, I don't know if you're familiar with my analysis, but I'm going to give you an example here. Okay. Let's go back in time. So let's go back to this move here. Okay. Back in from 2008 to 2014. Now this here is, this is an E wave. Okay. That's an E wave. Now this particular E wave was a, like a contracting ending diagonal. So you can see that it started off nice and sharp and it slowly contracted into a small point and, you know, it went down. So very similar to that, we saw the first part was one, two, very pathetic, small, three, four, pretty drawn out sideways and then five, you know, it was just, a, it was just a zigzag. So it depends if you know the waves, then maybe you have an idea of what this pattern actually is, right? So in this case, it's actually clearer. It's actually much clearer and it's going to be roughly the same size as wave C length, sorry. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're seeing. And that's, that's, that's how awesome Arius wave is. It gives you that kind of 
inside. So the ones, the best thing I can tell you right now, and it's it's a secret, but it's not a secret because I'm telling you, obviously, the first move in a correction is always a zigzag. Okay. So if that's the best part of this video, is that the first move in a correction is always a zigzag. So, I mean, there's much more to learn about the waves and just that, but that's probably the most critical thing to know when you're first seeing a corrective pattern. So if you can't understand why or how it becomes a zigzag, you have to understand that it becomes very obvious when you see this. Okay. So right now you should be considering going short because if you haven't seen a zigzag and you're trying to call this a zigzag because you saw this, you have to ask yourself, well, why is C wave so short? Well, maybe you should wonder, maybe it's not a C wave. Right, because taking shortcuts in your analysis is always going to lead you astray. Now, hopefully you found this video informative and interesting. Thank you for watching.